In the last video, we looked at Swahili verbs, and we used them as an example of how we work in linguistics. We take data and we analyze the patterns within the data to then form hypotheses about how a language works. We looked at the pieces of Swahili words and we formed a hypothesis that maybe this part is signaling the subject who's doing the action, and another part is signaling what the time uh, or the tense is. So we take data and we build hypotheses. That's basically how we work. In the next couple of videos, I will tell you a little bit about subfields in linguistics and about what kind of data they use. Linguistics is the scientific study of language. It's a science. We gather data and then we look at patterns. These would be patterns within a language or across different languages. For these we build models or hypotheses for how these uh, components are working. Maybe it could be the chunks of a word. Maybe it could be the ordering of words. We form these models and then we try to understand why they exist, whether they could be in, uh, formed in any other way and so forth. We study which patterns can exist in human languages and which can't. And in this regard, linguistics is very much a science. We form hypotheses and then we test them with data. There's several core components to linguistics. Phonetics is the study of how sounds are produced in your mouth or with your hands in the case of sign languages. Phonology is the study of how those sounds work in your brain. Morphology is the study of how sounds cluster into bits and pieces that have meaning, such as cat, syntax is the study of phrases and sentences and how they're ordered together. Semantics is the study of meaning, and pragmatics is the study of meaning in context. I'll show you a few examples of these. As you can see, by the way, each level is like um, nested within each other. So phonetics can interact with phonology, phonology can interact with morphology, and so forth. Let's talk about sound. I'm a sound person, I love sound. Phonetics, as I told you, are the physical pronunciations, either with your mouth or with your hand, of um, a component of language, of a sound, for example. Phonology is how those patterns are organized in our brains. Our knowledge of the phonetics and phonology of English is what lets us answer these questions, which I offer you. What do you think about the word plork? Could it be a word of English? Is it a word of English? And if it isn't, could it be? What about the word proc? Could that be a word of English? Take a moment to think about it. Please pause the video. So plork is not a word of English currently. Maybe uh, in 10 years or in 10 minutes it'll be invented and it'll mean, mean something. But for now, it is not a word of English. However, it could be a word of English. This, the first two sounds in the word, P and L, are similar to those words like plan, for example, uh, plumber, for example. So that is a group of sounds that can exist in English. Same as the ending RK. Plork rhymes with work, for example, uh, with dork. So plork is a word that could exist. It just doesn't exist yet. However, there's something very different about fbrock. The combination FP FPR fpr, is not a legal combination for the start of English words. There's no other words in English that start like that, and there really cannot be. It's not a legal word of the language. This is phonology. It's the study of how sounds are patterned and distributed, and how some combinations are possible and some combinations are not. So phonetics is the study of sounds as they happen in your mouth or your hands, and phonology is the study of how they're distributed in your mind, what the restrictions are. Morphology is the study of how those sounds cluster together into minimal units of meaning, which then form the structure of words. A morpheme is one of those tiny structures of meaning. We, what we did in the previous video was a morphology exercise. We looked at the Swahili word Nina Soma, for example, and then we tried to figure out what the morphemes in the word were. We had ni, signaling the first person singular, or I, na, 
for the progressive to be doing something, and then soma to read. Notice how this notation breaks the morphemes with dashes, ni, na, soma, first in Swahili, and then in English. First person singular, progressive, read, and then we have the meaning, I am reading. We're going to call this glossing, by the way. Here's a second exercise in morphology. These are some sentences from modern Greek. Uh, for example, os kilos efayetin podiki. The dog ate the mouse. Iskili efagantis podikis. The dogs ate the mice. Tofaitotus kilu. The dog's food. Tofaitoton skilun. The dog's food. And that's many dogs and it's their food. Take a look at that uh, at those sentences and try to figure out what is the word for dogs, something that belongs to many dogs, in modern Greek. Try to use the knowledge from all of the sentences to figure that out. And then try to figure out, out of that word, what are its component morphemes? What are the parts of the word dogs in Greek? Please pause the video. So the strategy you could follow would be something very similar to what we did with the Swahili. All of the sentences have the word dog, dogs, dogs, dogs in English. So we need to look at what's common in the four sentences in Greek. And all of them has something that looks like skilos, skili, skilu, skilon. So if all of them have that similarity, skil in the Greek, and all of them have dog in the English, skilos probably corresponds to dog and that is exactly the case so in the fourth sentence skilon is the word that corresponds to dogs the possessive for many dogs it's the food of those of the many dogs since we have the root skil um, occur in different configurations we have skilos for dog skili for dogs skilu for dogs possessive singular and skilon for dogs possessive plural we can probably guess that skil is what's common across those four words so it probably means dog it's the root and then the bit at the ending tells you whether it's one dog skil os many dogs skil i whether something belongs to one dog skil u or whether something belongs to many dogs, skil on. So dogs would be skil dog plus on, belonging to many dogs. This word would have two morphemes. And again, we know it because we observed it, comparing it to other sentences. And that's how we could decipher the pattern. As a partial summary of what we have so far, linguistics is the scientific study of language. And we work with data like Swahili data, Greek data, to try to construct models of how language works. We took some Greek data and from there we tried to guess which word dog was. And we formed a hypothesis. It was skilos. We use that to describe the patterns that we see and in general to describe human languages. These are, we looked at patterns in phonology and morphology. In the next video, we'll look at syntax and other subfields of linguistics.